Welcome to our next presentation in the series from Ag Legacy. This presentation will cover why family businesses don't plan for succession. Ag Legacy is an effort intended to assist rural families to create their own legacy by beginning the thought process and opening the lines for better communication. I'm John Hewlett, today's presenter and one of the contributors to Ag Legacy. Clearly, there are a multitude of reasons why a given family or particular individuals may not be planning for the succession of their business. This presentation is intended to take a look at those reasons and from a number of perspectives. This may or may not be similar to your situation. Perhaps your circumstances are much more straightforward. It is our experience and often those of other professionals who help rural families sort out these types of situations that rarely are the challenges they face either simple or easy to work through. Let's get started. Carl's year was off to a very rough start. Though he had been counting on Jim, his oldest son, to take over the livestock business in the coming months, Jim's announcement last night that he and his wife were getting a divorce was sure to put the brakes on that idea. Sandra, his oldest daughter, had been very successfully running the crop business for the last several years, but when both her husband and her oldest child were killed in a terrible combine accident, she seemed to lose all interest in the business. None of the other kids had ever shown any interest in the place. He and his own wife were more than ready to give up the long days, especially since they were both turning 80 in a couple of months. It seems like any more they keep asking themselves the same question. Why didn't we have a plan for the succession of the business? If the truth were known, Enid and Carl had never considered doing anything but working on the farm. After all, it had been their entire life. They had always thought that one or the other of the kids would eventually take over. Logic would suggest that developing a succession plan would be an obvious requirement of management and business ownership. However, complex forces are at work, and despite recognizing the importance of a plan, most farm owners and managers decide to do nothing about succession. Obviously, there may be many reasons that might be given for not planning any better. Business control might be one of those. Few business owners find it easy to come to terms with the idea that the business could operate and survive without them. As a result, they are reluctant to give up control. Facing the reality that others may be able to run their business as well or better than they can themselves is painful and threatening. The business defines them, and surrendering power can be a huge sacrifice. Fear of retirement could be another powerful force. The thought of leaving their day life to day involvement in the business and adapting to a whole new lifestyle can be very scary. Succession planning forces business owners to think about the end of their lives and come to terms with their own mortality. These thoughts can evoke feelings of fear or regret. The inability to choose among heirs often discourages succession planning. The dilemma is between business values and family values. Should the selection be based on business competence versus the family values of loving and treating all family members equally? Owning and other operating a farm has some unique differences when compared to most other occupations. The primary differences that most hinder succession planning in agricultural businesses include emotional attachment to the land, for example. Most farmers are emotionally attached to the land they own and manage. In many cases, these lands have been a part of the family for more than one generation. Selling or dividing the land is often not even considered due to these emotional attachments. No plans to retire. Many full-time farmers have a very difficult time hanging up their hats when the time comes to retire. They often never expect to fully retire from farming. The reasons are many, but often center around that 24-7 work ethic and personal drive that led them into farming in the first place. Most farmers have developed a lifelong attachment to farming, and many find it hard to accept the slowdown that generally comes with retirement. Farming is a lifestyle, and most people in agriculture feels it offers something non-farm life can't match. The opportunity to live, work, and play together. Live in the country, teach children responsibility and a strong work ethic, and healthy goals and values. Most of those who have lived their entire life on a farm have a difficult time visualizing living anywhere else. 
Having no retirement income is another big concern. No source of retirement income uh, is definitely an issue that often prevents farmers from fully retiring. In, in many cases, farmers have invested in agricultural assets like land, machinery, livestock, or buildings throughout their entire career and have few resources to invest in retirement plans. In order to perpetuate the business, it is advisable to sell or otherwise liquidate productive assets. This really leaves them with few choices. Founders of the outgoing generation tend to adopt one of three attitudes regarding the family business and managing transition to the next generation. The first attitude is one of proprietorship. Proprietors are focused on ownership of the business and see themselves as central to the business's future. They can be very controlling of any involvement of children in the business as they do not trust others' ability to make good business decisions. As a result, their children often become passive or even rebellious in reaction to the over-authoritarian approach of the proprietors. Another perspective is being a conductor. Conductors like the idea of the farm or family business and encourage children to become involved. However, they remain firmly in control of the business. They are not usually interested in developing a detailed succession plan, but try to foster a business culture and environment. A third perspective is being a technician. Technicians create a business around their own technical skills and creative abilities. They generally dislike the management aspects of the business and often delegate those responsibilities to others. However, they view themselves as essential to the business where no other person could possess the same skills as they do. As a result, they do not pass their skills on to others, nor do they easily let go of their role in the business. Now, the next generation also has a perspective. We're talking here about the incoming generation, who are typically children of the founding operator or founding generation. However, they could be any person in the family business who is younger than the founder. The perspective and issues for them uh, vary depending on the individual's relationship to the founder. Sons are often the traditional inheritors of management or leadership roles in the family, and so too in the family business. Fathers and sons may be able to work well side by side in a business, but just as likely the father-son relationship and accompanying rivalry or friction may spill over into the business. Daughters are more often assuming roles of responsibility and management in family businesses over recent years. Father-daughter relationships are less often fraught with friction or competition, uh, and in this way may prove to be a stronger foundation for successful management succession in families where this type of role is more readily accepted. Marrying into a family business may provide opportunities to become involved in that business, however, the road to involvement can include many problems, including possibly feeling like an outsider, maybe being overwhelmed by the closeness of the relationships with the spouse's family, being treated with suspicion by other family members, or even jealousy or competitiveness on the part of other family members. And family businesses may be comprised of more than just one family. Although such arrangements may create more opportunities for individual family members and a larger set of skills or expertise, it can also be increasingly complicated due to the greater number of individual interests involved. Larger family businesses usually include non-family employees. Most often, these individuals provide general labor and do not expect to become owners or hold positions of higher responsibility. When a non-family member is named as a successor in a business, they have to learn to successfully navigate the political and emotional landmines of various family relationships. The success of any family business can be helped by good communication, and this is especially true during times of transition. When employees and employers are unable to effectively communicate, a number of challenges can arise. Awareness of the consequences of a long-term lack of clear communication is a first step. Taking active steps toward improving communication will benefit all employees as well as the farm operation. Having a plan for handling conflict can also go a long way toward keeping disagreements 
and communication failures from spiraling out of control. By formalizing the management of the business, the family can more smoothly undergo a transition like ownership and management succession. Goals can be set, milestones determined, and progress evaluated more easily. Issues can be more efficiently dealt with as they arise and changes made as needed. However, many family businesses resist formalizing their business management. Let's take a look at a few of the reasons why. Few are able to instinctively formalize the management of their family farm business. Sometimes it is advisable to bring in an outside consultant to help. Family members may struggle with fear of giving control to other family members, in-laws, or even employees. Conversely, they may feel an obligation to certain family members or employees, so the issues of trust come up. Overall, families must trust or learn to trust each other, appreciate one another's perspectives and skills, and have faith that the process of formalizing management will help the business succeed over time. Farm business owners often have little experience delegating responsibilities to others. Entrepreneurial fathers, for example, may especially have trouble delegating to their sons. Parents may be uncomfortable relinquishing control or may not even appreciate new ideas posed by their own children. While many business owners think about possibilities for the future, they rarely document their thoughts or formally share them with others. Farm business owners are accustomed to working alone and often don't think about how to elicit cooperation and support from others. When we look at the succession of the business, there are two distinct transfers to consider during succession planning. One is the ownership of the business, and the other is the management of the business. When we consider ownership, we're thinking about who owns assets and the net worth of the business or who might be affected by the financial performance of the business, or who might have contributed or might require capital after the fact. Management, on the other hand, implies a discussion or consideration of who runs the day-to-day -day operation, who's responsible for the financial performance of the business, or what are the requirements for skills and competencies in the management process overall. Now, certainly all of us probably want to be fair. Uh, it's certainly a laudable objective to desire to be fair when considering the succession of the business. However, uh, this objective rarely results in the intended outcome. Each member of a family may have a different idea of what is fair as compared to what the founders might be thinking. Another consideration is ensuring adequate capital. You may want to make sure that the new owners have enough capital to provide for the needs of the business now and in the future. But when you're considering what retirement income needs might be, this makes for a conflicting situation. And covering the needs of other family members. So family members who are not included in the future ownership of the business may need to have an alternative plan for their individual futures and then selecting the mechanism to ensure that the desired outcomes are achieved. The family members and individuals involved in family business ventures can make an orderly transfer of ownership more likely by following a systematic method of evaluating all the alternatives. Now, there are several options that exist for transferring the ownership of the business from one individual to another. Gifting would be one of those options. In this case, founders could gift shares or parts of the business or business assets to one or more individuals who might be involved. Another concept would be to liquidate, where a clear agreement on the course forward is not forthcoming. Selling the business outright to an outside interest may represent a way of settling issues without favoritism or even open conflict among the people involved. Another possibility or a variation on that theme to moment be to sell a portion. So selling parts of the business either to multiple family members or to an outside interest represents another way to ensure that all family members with an interest are in fact included in the succession plan itself. Or another possibility is to do nothing. 
And unfortunately, many founders opt to avoid the thorny issues of transferring ownership of the family business by doing exactly that. This option may avoid open conflict or even disagreement between family members while the founders are still alive. However, it leaves the next generation subject to the interpretation of the state and federal inheritance laws and the subsequent tax laws that go along with it. Transferring the management of the family business is also challenging. In addition to the feelings and needs of everyone involved, one must also take into consideration the individual interests and skills. Many founders fail to stop and consider that family members may have accepted a role in the family business only because it needed filling. They may have experience or even interest in something completely different than what they're currently doing. Evaluating family members' interest in and skills at various management functions is key to finding the right successor. Several different options exist for transferring the management of the business from one individual to another. For example, founders could appoint a family member to be the successor. This may work well if the family member has the skills needed to fulfill the new role, but if they do not, it could lead to increased tensions among other members of the family business and risk the future viability of the business. Multiple family members or even all members could participate in nominating and selecting a future manager. This approach takes off the founder of everyone and may encourage a more well-rounded view of potential successors. Seeking an outsider with appropriate skills and interest may be a good solution when a clear successor is not obvious. However, selecting an outsider can lead to jealousy or resentment on the part of a passed-over family member. Alternatively, you could engage an outsider to help the family evaluate and select a successor. This strategy ensures that there is an impartial third party helping to direct the decision-making. The founder of the family may choose to divide management activities among multiple family members. This may be a good alternative if there is no family member with all the skills required for the overall business, but multiple members who have applicable skills. The challenge with this type of solution is that it requires communication, cooperation, and consensus to make business decisions where there are multiple individuals involved. And then there's the old standby of do nothing. An option followed by many founders in handling the transfer of business management is in fact to do nothing. This often occurs when the founder is reluctant to give up control of the business to someone else. However, if the founder dies or becomes unable to manage the business without some transition of responsibilities, it leaves current managers and the next generation with little or no guidance about how to successfully run that business. Now, a big challenge in succession planning is knowing where to start. This seven-step process defines not only how to begin, but also important actions to take throughout the entire transition. Uh, much more information is available on this process and how to begin developing a plan for succession within the Ag Legacy materials. There is a better way, and one of the important elements of that is to get started soon. You might want to use the Internet to locate resources, uh, many of which are in fact free, or you may want to take a look at the materials that are available at aglegacy.org, including self-paced courses, workbooks, newsletters, uh, bulletins that go through a lot of details on uh, succession planning, as well as recorded presentations, and actually a whole lot more. Now, Eden and Carl did not develop a plan for the succession of their business, when it might have been easier for everyone to discuss it. However, it is never too late to get started, especially where the individuals involved are interested. You do have options. So plan to take a step to get the ball rolling soon. So as we wrap up this presentation on family business succession planning, we hope you've offered you a few things to think about on the topic, especially some ideas for how to get additional started with your own legacy. For more information and links to additional resources, we invite you to visit aglegacy.org. We would also like to thank you for taking time to view this presentation. And with that, 
For Ag Legacy, I'm John Hewlett.